Hi there, I'm Paul Straw with Imagix, and today I wanted to give a quick tour of Chrome's developer tools. The developer tools are really handy for all sorts of things when building sites and web apps. Today I'll be focusing on a couple ways you can use the dev tools to help make sure you're building performant websites. First off, if you haven't used them before, there are a few ways to open the developer tools. The two quickest ways are by right-clicking anywhere on the page and selecting Inspect, or by using a keyboard shortcut. On macOS, that defaults to Option-Command-I. Once you've got the developer tools open, you'll see several tabs along the top. We're going to be mostly focused on the Network tab. The Network tab, as you might expect, helps you view requests made by the browser and gives details about items loaded over the network. Within the Network tab itself, there are a few sections. A toolbar at the top with various controls, a filter section that allows you to pick which items you see, a timeline view showing when requests take place, and a list of the requests themselves. So let's get some information in here by visiting a website. I'm going to head to The Verge. As you can see, when the site starts loading, the developer tools immediately fill up with a ton of information. All the loaded resources are logged, the timeline view fills up and can be navigated, and you get a great summary of everything that's happening in this lower toolbar. So looking at that summary, you can see that there were about 2 megabytes transferred and 287 HTTP requests. That actually seems a little bit low for this site. And the reason that is, is because I've already visited this site recently, and many of the assets were fetched directly from my browser's cache. One simple but very useful DevTools feature is the Disable Cache option. When checked, this option forces the browser to ignore its local cache on each refresh while the developer tools are open. This is very useful when debugging cache problems and for figuring out the overall payload size of your site. As you can see, after checking Disable Cache and reloading, the DevTools now report about 3.6 megabytes transferred initially. So that reflects the full size of this website. The Disable Cache option is also quite handy when used in conjunction with the DevTools throttling options. The throttle controls allow you to simulate various network conditions, such as slow mobile connections. This allows you to easily get accurate load time numbers and see how poor network conditions affect your site or app's performance. So let's dig into this site a little bit. Looking through the various content types and network tab using the filters, we can see that XHR or AJAX requests were about 50 kilobytes. JavaScript, 1.5 out of 3.6 megabytes. CSS, 54 kilobytes out of 3.6 megabytes. And images, 1.7 out of 3.6 megabytes. So just around half of the entire weight of the site. Now that we're looking at just images, let's see if we can figure out why they weigh so much. I'm going to sort the list of images by size. And just do that by clicking here and scroll to the top. And we can see that there's actually three images here that are almost an entire megabyte just by themselves. 345 kilobytes, 320 kilobytes, and 320 kilobytes. And interestingly enough, these three all appear to have the same name. If you click into them, we can see that they're actually identical looking as far as I can tell. So let's find those on the page. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. And here we go. This looks like it's it. So now that we found it on the page, what we can do is right click and click inspect. That's going to jump us back to the Elements tab, which shows the HTML layout of the page. And it actually has pre-selected that image because we clicked Inspect on it. So we can mouse over that image. And we can see here that it is being displayed at 268 by 151 pixels, even though the actual image that's being served to the browser is 2,400 by 1,350 pixels. That's significantly larger than it needs to be. Now, I'm not going to get into the specifics of how you can optimize images for your sites in this video. If you want to learn more about that, you can head to imagix.com and read up on that there. However, you can see that using the developer tools, we were able to quickly find a pretty large chunk of where our website's weight was coming from. Out of the 3.8 megabytes that have been transferred so far, that's almost an entire megabyte just for those three images. Now, there's a lot more to learn about the developer tools, but hopefully that gives you a bit of insight into how they can be used to quickly learn more about what resources your site is loading and diagnose some performance issues. Thanks so much for watching, and if you'd like to chat more about this stuff, please come by the Imagix community Slack. Several members of our team hang out there and love chatting to users. You can sign up right now by visiting slack.imagix.com.